Hey everyone, my name is Scott McCormick. I'm a Bible teacher and I'm the creator of the soon to be launched purebox.app. And today I wanna to share with you the five secret questions to help you identify pornified content in your life instantly and help you avoid temptation before it even occurs. First off, I gotta start with a story. So my wife and I, we love to watch TV at night. Uh, for a while there, we were watching a show called The Office. Have you ever seen The Office? It's a very funny show. We like to end the night on a funny show. That's what we usually watch, goofy stuff. And one of the main characters, Michael Scott, especially in the early seasons of the show, had these running gags, lines that he would always use to get a good laugh. One of those was an old joke. That's what she said. And after a while, as my wife and I began to watch the show over and over, that language crept into our language. We would say that joke to each other. And now I, I wouldn't dare say that outside of the context of just between the two of us, but I thought, you know, it's totally okay. We're married, it's fine. We can say a naughty joke to each other every once in a while. Well, I was studying my Bible one day and I want you, if you can get your Bible out, read along with me. I wanted to read something for, uh, to you from Ephesians chapter five. So remember that story in your mind as we read this. I'm going to be reading in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among the saints. Well, now, if you're if this is the first time you're meeting me, one thing you need to know about me is that I struggled with an addiction of pornography for two decades from age 13 until uh, the year after that my first son was born. And uh, at this point, when I was reading this and I was using that joke with my wife, I got to that verse and went, okay, you know what? I've been freed from that addiction of pornography. So this sexual immorality part, uh, I got that covered, I'm good. And then I read the very next verse. Look at verse four. It says, let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. And I went, no, wait a minute. Crude joking? Are you telling me that crude joking is another form of sexual immorality? Well, Paul wants to make sure when he writes to the Ephesians that they don't make that mistake of thinking those are two separate things. So he sandwiches that between verse three and verse five here, in verse five it says, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. And that hit me in the face. I thought, wow, here I was thinking I was doing really great. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm telling a dirty joke and it's just between me and my wife. That's what she said. But here, Paul is writing to the Ephesians that that is sexual immorality. I thought, wow, how did that even get in my, my mouth? How, how am I now paying attention to that? And it's changing the way that I speak and it's triggering my mind. I'll tell you this, I may be freed from an addiction of pornography, but I still struggle with that temptation. And so here's what I want you to learn. First of all, is that there is pornified content in our lives. TV shows, movies, books, ads on the internet, things that are intentionally sexualized to get your mind triggered into those same pathways of temptation so that later on in the day, maybe even the next day, you go out and seek to act on that temptation by viewing pornography, reading a romance novel, and participating in those things. So what can you do? What can you do to avoid that? Well, what I had to learn in that, in that moment, in that story, was that I needed to learn how to identify pornified content so that I could see it from afar and say, I'm not going to participate in that. I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to go watch something else. I'm going to read a different book. I'm going to go to a different website because I don't want my brain to be exposed to that and trigger those same pathways. So how do we identify? Let's keep reading in Ephesians chapter five. Let's skip down uh, to verse number seven. Paul writes, therefore, do not become partners with them for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Pay attention here. It says, walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Things that are good and right 
and true. Now, I wanna teach you these five secret questions that I've learned as I continue to study about this stuff to help me identify Portify content. And you can learn this too. I didn't make these questions up. These are questions that I got from this book, Wired for Intimacy, How Pornography Hijacks the Male Brain by William M. Struthers. He is a Christian biopsychologist. Before I read this book, I didn't even know that was a profession. He does a deep dive in his book on the anatomy and biochemistry of the male brain. How does it respond to pornography? Early in the book, he helps us identify pornographic or pornified content in our lives. And I want to share these questions with you. I'm going to get them straight from this book. In fact, um, if you're looking at this video from the one pager, or if you're on, for example, YouTube, there'll be a link to the one pager down below. I've also got a link to the book, so you can go buy it and read it too. So here, let's go through these questions. Question number one, write this down. Question number one is how are women and men portrayed? in the content. How are women and men portrayed in the content? Are they portrayed as people or as objects to be lusted after and desired? So let me give you an example of this. The other day I was bored and I got on Amazon Prime and I thought I'll watch a video. And guess what's for free on Amazon Prime, or at least was at the time, a James Bond movie. And what's the beginning of every James Bond movie? That intro scene where they shoot the gun and then there's all the silhouettes of the women dancing. And it's just a silhouette. You don't see details or anything, but I could feel my heart actually start to race a little bit. Now you need to learn to pay attention to those things, by the way. It, learn a little bit of introspection as you notice your reaction to content in your life. And I realized that what's being portrayed on the screen, these women are not being portrayed as people. They're just being portrayed as objects of desire. That's pornified content. That's a good example of that. How are women and men portrayed in the content? Question number two, write this one down. How is sexual intimacy represented in the TV show or the movie or the book that you're reading? Is it within a marital relationship or in isolation? I mean, honestly, think back here. Think about all the TV shows that you've watched in the last several years Whenever a sex scene is presented in the show, is it within the confines of a holy, monogamous man and woman marital relationship before the Lord, or is it completely separated from that? Is it a one-time thing? Is it a man and woman who just live together? Is it, I'm not even going to name all the different variations there. When we present a sexually intimate situation in that setting, it's separate from what God designed it to be. Now, why do producers do it that way? They do it because they know it's racy, it's risque, it gets your mind going, all oh, right, I want some of that. And it gets your mind thinking in that same pornographic context that leads to temptation. That's pornified content. All right, let's read question number three. What is the purpose intended by the producer of the image or media? Now, this one's pretty easy. Um, if it is a pornographic website, it's produced for the purpose of giving you erotic material. If it's a medical website, it's not produced for that purpose. There may be anatomical drawings, but it's not for that purpose. But I, we need to present this question. What's the purpose of the material by the producer with the fourth question at the same time, which is what motivations do you, the viewer, bring to the exchange? It could be an innocuous uh, set of content, but you, what you've personally brought to the exchange is you're seeking that hit, that, that excitement of the pornography. You're trying to objectify the person that's in the content. So you got to look at those two questions together, not just what is the purpose of the content, but if this is something where, let me give you an example, yoga videos. Uh, women who produce yoga videos frequently dress as though they're going to be doing yoga, which is not a lot of clothes. They're not doing it to make someone uh, see them as objects of desire. They're doing it to teach someone how to be more fit or go through a wellness exercise through yoga. But if you bring to the exchange, I want to see somebody with not much clothes on in different positions, then you've brought that pornographic context to the situation. So look at those two questions together. What is the purpose intended by the producer? And what do I bring to the exchange? What do you bring to the exchange? What is your motivation 
in the situation. Now, here's question number five. How explicit is the image or how much is left to the imagination? So sometimes there's content that you'd look at and go, well, that's not pornography because they have clothes on. But how are they wearing the clothes? Is the clothes are the clothes low cut? Do they accentuate parts of their body and make you try to think, I wonder what's under there? See, there's a way to dress in, in a way that does it, you can look beautiful without trying to make somebody wonder. And, and so think about that. When you see images like that, that is pornified content. So let's go over the five questions one more time. And then I want you to take a look at the one pager, go through the exercises, take notes, look at examples, um, go through the checklist. And then there's also a, a link to this book, Wired for Intimacy. Let's go through the questions one more time. How are men and women portrayed as people or objects of lust or desire? Question number two, how is sexual intimacy presented? Is it within the confines of a marital relationship? Or is it isolated from that? Number three, what is the purpose intended by the producer of the image? And remember, you got to look at that with question number four at the same time, which is what motivations do you say? Do I say that out loud to yourself? What motivations do I bring to the exchange? Question number five is how explicit is the image? How much is left to the imagination? So thank you so much for listening uh, to the five secret questions. I hope that this is helpful for you. I really do. Uh, this has been helpful for me is I look at content around me and I intentionally block access to that in my life so that I can avoid temptation before it even occurs. The best defense is not a good offense. The best defense is to not be in the situation in the first place. So if you can identify this content in your life, you can avoid it before the temptation occurs. And I want to leave you with my key verse personally which is from John chapter eight and verse 36. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And I'll be praying for you that you're free indeed too. Thanks.